Jung said that there is a magical key which unlocks the closed doors of matter, and that this key is a deity dormant and concealed within matter, and the key is hidden in plain sight. This is an image from the HBO show Westworld. The first season of the show pulled major themes from Julian James' book on the origin of consciousness and named an episode after the book. I was really interested by how the show creators wove this image into the theme of the protagonist transitioning from living an empty robotic life into being fully alive. This is an image that C.G. Young would find lots of meaning in. I believe this because he chiseled a similar image out of stone for his retreat home. This image reads, I am an orphan, alone. Nevertheless, I am found everywhere. I am one, but opposed to myself. I am youth and the old man at the same time. I have known neither father nor mother because I have had to be fetched out of the deep like a fish or fell like a white stone from heaven. In woods and mountains I roam, but I am hidden in the innermost soul of man. I am mortal for everyone, yet I am not touched by the cycle of the ions." End quote. The figure at the center of the mandala is the mythological symbol of the Anthropos. Von Franz called the Anthropos central to the work of almost all important alchemists. The Anthropos is the image of a divine or greater man who must be freed from his imprisonment in matter and darkness. Through this work, the human liberator at the same time achieves immortality. Many ancient myths tell a version of the same tale, primordial man who is fragmented in the world and must be gathered together and made one. She says the Anthropos can be understood as mankind's group soul. It is an image of the bond uniting all of humankind. In Hinduism, the Anthropos is called the Atman. In mystic Judaism, this is Adam Kadam. In Chinese alchemy, this is the Qin Yen, or true man. Jung said, the Anthropos animates the whole cosmos. The spirit has poured himself out into everything, even into organic matter. He is present in metal and stone. Sci-fi author Philip K. Dick said, I identify him as Apollo. He appears to different cultures under different names. He is immortal and the great civilizing influence of Greece and Persia. He can divide himself and to me, he brought reason. This is a painting by Young in his Red Book. Here you see a solar Christian cross like mandala. Right below it, there's a figure holding a vessel above its head. This is where some Hindus and Buddhists place the seventh chakra. Both the mythologies of Christ and Buddha are of great importance in Young's work. But since he himself was a Western Christian brought up within a primarily Christian culture, he plays a lot of emphasis on the Christ image. Jung felt that the Christian myth was a helpful representation of the Anthropos for those of us brought up in Western society. Jung said that the indwelling of the Holy Ghost brings about a Christification of many. You might recall the Holy Ghost is a representation of the mother, the feminine archetype, the female energy of the world. So what Jung is saying here is that the Divine Feminine brings about a Christification inside of anyone who lets her in. And one is left to ask, okay, what exactly is a Christification? Christification means finding the self within and allowing its expression in this world of matter. This depiction of Christ shows his head at the heart of a mandala, again a representation of the seventh chakra. It's important to understand that this isn't about Christ we're used to hearing about from dogmatic religions, authorities, and manipulative preachers. And just in case the thought crossed your mind, no, you haven't listened this long to have been lured into joining a Christian church. This is about something deeper, something more authentic and numinous. Philip K. Dick called this trans-Christian mysticism. It's not limited to one culture, country, or religion. 
von Franz said, Christ represents a collective soul, the one inner Christ within the multitude. This is about the true living Christ image, the Christ image that the Catholic Church and Protestant establishments have replaced with oppressive rules and outdated dogma. For 2,000 years, Christian power structures have twisted and distorted the image of Christ into a superhero who can somehow fulfill all of your wishes if you follow the rules. The true Christ is a representation of the Anthropos, which in turn is a representation of the self within the world of matter. Before this archetype was represented by Christ, it was represented by other figures like the Egyptian Osiris, the Greek Dionysus, and the Roman mystery god Ion. Dionysus and Jesus Christ were both referred to as the true vine of God. It's as if this vine is hidden within the world, and once you find it, you can latch on to it. And so again I'll say, it's like finding a particular frequency on a radio station, or a television station, or finding a Wi-Fi network password that was previously hidden from you. Some call this Christ consciousness. Iskon, commonly known as the Hare Krishnas, teach that the Hindu god Krishna can be reached if one achieves a state of being which they call Krishna consciousness. In Buddhism, you have the concept of Buddha nature. Buddha wasn't just some historical person. There is a state of being that is Buddha nature. Some argue that early Christians knew quite well that the Christ image was similar to other deities. There are theories that early Christians thought Jesus of Nazareth was a perfect representation of the Anthropos archetype. That Christ was a new representation that both Jews and Gentiles could recognize. Some people even think that Jesus' life is almost entirely fiction, simply a mystical teaching narrative written for a cult religion. But regardless of what exactly happened 2,000 years ago, the historical record is clear on at least one thing. These early Christians were so passionate about their beliefs that many died defending them. Here are some quotes attributed to Christ in canonical and extra-canonical Christian Gospels. I knock, and if anyone should open to me, I will come in. Do not be of the world, as I was not of it, nor have I worked in it, but follow me and be perfect. I personally have experienced this sort of Christ image. I was raised Catholic as a child, and in my 20s I became something of an atheist. I shot down any religious or spiritual notion that people would bring up to me. As I began activating Circuit 5 and Circuit 6 on the regular, mostly in Hindu or Buddhist contexts, something startling happened. Many of the visions I mentioned before were undoubtedly Christian in nature. One of the most powerful experiences I've had in my life was also clearly a Christian experience. I would have not believed in any of what I'm saying right now had I not experienced this firsthand. So if you're skeptical, more power to you. I have concluded that Jung, von Franz, and others doing similar work are absolutely correct about this. There is a self archetype. This archetype is hidden in the material world and the Christ Anthropos image is a powerful representation of the self that we can experience for ourselves. This Christ is alive now, has always been, and always will be. This Christ image, the self hidden in the world of matter, is the living water. This is a quote from the Gospel of Thomas. Whoever drinks from my mouth will become like me. I myself will become he, and the things that are hidden will be revealed to him. It is possible to hear the message of the self if you listen close enough. This is why the Christ image is called the Logos, the living word of God. The Gospel of Matthew says, many are called and few are chosen. This understanding of the Logos, the word of God, has striking similarities to what the Buddhists refer to as Dharma. I've discussed the Tao in this lecture a few times now, the word Tao can be translated as the way. Christ was literally quoted as saying, I am the way. And I believe the way is the same way. 
doesn't matter what you call it. Now it's important to make clear that this experience of the Anthropos is available to everyone. A major pitfall of the higher circuits is that it's easy to conclude this experience is somehow about you as an individual. Circuit 7 can get activated in some people who lack the mental models to handle such an experience properly. People can become terribly destabilized by this powerful experience and take it to mean that they are the savior of mankind. This is a photo of Alvaro Thesis, a Brazilian man that says he had a vision while fasting in 1979. He has come to believe that he was literally Jesus Christ reborn. He started preaching and created an organization that some people call a cult. This is a classic case of archetypal possession. I have no doubt that what Alvaro experienced was real to him, but this doesn't mean he's any more or less special than anyone else. There's a lengthy Wikipedia page which lists people who have claimed to be the Messiah or Jesus Christ specifically. Ramdas would tell a story about his brother. His brother was convinced that he was Jesus Christ. When Ramdas would visit his brother in the mental hospital, they talk about it. And when Ramdas informed his brother that Christ was in everyone else too, his brother just simply refused to believe it.